want to say, have you started? I want to say good afternoon to those that are listening now on the YouTube network. Uh, we are just a few days now from Father's Day. I want to say to all people out there, first of all, all the fathers that will be listening to this message this weekend, Happy Father's Day if you're a grandfather. Happy Father's Day if you're a great-grandfather or an uncle or a godfather. Happy Father's Day to you. Especially if this is your first Father's Day, I pray the Lord bless you and keep you during this time and at this very moment. We are still, so much is going on in America right now. We are still, even though we're coming out of the stay-at-home orders, uh, the pandemic is still going on and spiking in various parts of America as of today, which I believe today is June 17th, 17th. So let's keep a prayer for everything that's going on, the protest, the actions of police brutality, uh, the government, and all the things that are going on there, uh, the economy and the problems that are going on there. And, Lord, let's just pray. Church, it's praying time like it's never been before. We've got to pray. The Bible says that man ought to always pray and not faint. We're going to come to you today from where we left off at last week. We're still in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, the fifth chapter, the fifth chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, the fifth chapter. And we left you last week at verse 11, where it said, So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. And this is dealing with Ananias and Sapphira and how they took the possession and they were punished with death. And when this went out, because you had a man that came in and died three hours later, his wife comes in, she dies. And if you were in a community and heard this, yeah, great fear would probably come over you. Now today, the way things are now, people would say, well, you know, those, that's how things are. And they would go on about themselves. But in those days, in the early days of the church, um, the Bible says great fear came upon all the church, meaning megas phobos in the Greek. Megas meaning great phobos meaning fear came over the church, the called out ones, the ecclesia, the ecclesia fear. People were fear, but it's not fear as we know it to be fear, but it was also reverence and joy and respect came over the church because this was a group that was founded after the day of Pentecost. <clears throat> and as they go forward uh, in the name of Jesus, they had to come together in reverence of one another, in joy and in fear of the power of the Holy Spirit. And today we've got people that don't fear or don't seem to care about the power of the Holy Ghost anymore. It's all about what I want to do. I have the power to change things. I have the power to stand on my own two feet. It's all about me, me, me. No, it's not about you, you, you. It's about if you're a baptized believer in Jesus Christ, son of the living God, and died and prayed and, and, and know that God raised him from the dead, you were saved. But here it is. A lot of people think it's all about them. Even in church today, it's about what I can do. It's about what I say. It's about what I can accomplish. It's about this and me, but not about the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 12, and through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. So when it says that hands, the hands of the apostle, many signs and wonders were done, a lot of signs, a lot of wonder were done because of the power of the Holy Ghost. My brothers and my sisters, we live in a time where people are so idiosyncratic. That's a big word out there that, that means specialized in what it is that I'm going to believe in, what I'm going to do. And as I said earlier, it's not about it's you, it's about the power of the Holy Ghost. I had a preacher the other day tell me, he was 
telling me, oh, Doc, you should have heard me. I was so anointed. I wish everybody in the country could have heard. They would have, that anointing would have just fell over them. No, it wouldn't have fell over them. Who are you? We think we're all that in a bag of chips and a strawberry soda. No, it is about the power of God in our lives. That's who it's about. Whenever we do, whatever we do, and whenever we do something for the Lord, it's for the Lord, glorifying of the Lord, not about us. It's not about us. It isn't about us. It's the power of the Holy Ghost, brothers and sisters. That's what it's truly all about. The hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. Now, the concept of, 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 of the signs and wonders goes back to the book of Exodus, the seventh chapter, verse 3. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and wonders in the land of Egypt. But listen what that fourth verse says. But Pharaoh will not hear. People today think it's all about them. You got, you got guys, instead of preaching the gospel, they're coming to the churches now and just letting people go, hurrah, 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 it's all about me, it's all about, you're going to have the power. No, it's about the power of the Holy Ghost. What does the Bible say? God increased the signs and wonders that Moses was going to perform over the, for the, uh, to, in front of Pharaoh, but Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Today, people's hearts are hardened because a lot of people are looking for signs and they're looking for wonders. We're not supposed to be looking for signs and wonders. We should be looking for a movement of the Holy Spirit. We should be thank, praying, praying that people come to the salvation and knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But a lot of people think it's all about them. But listen to what the Bible says. Listen to this. Matthew 24, 24. For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonder to deceive if possible, even the elect. Verse 25 says, see, I have told you beforehand. You got people now that are looking for signs and wonders when I would go to church. I'm looking for a sign and I'm looking for a wonder. You got people praying in church, talking about they're looking for a sign and they're looking for a wonder. What are you looking for? If you've been bought by the blood, shed blood of our precious Savior who died on that cross but rose on the third day morning with all power in his hands, what else are you looking for? You got to be careful of that. You got false prophets out there now teaching people to look for the signs and wonders. But so that's part of that. But the second part of that is, well, pet preacher, are there still signs and wonders? Are things still going on in the earth realm today? I would have to say yes. There are still signs and wonders. There are still things that are happening in the world today that are unexplainable, that are happening because of the power, the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost. We need preachers, we need church people that are full of the power and the Holy Ghost. I remember when I was a boy, there were certain people's houses. I would go with my daddy and he would go and, and visit and they would get to moaning in here. See, some of you young people don't know nothing about No matter what, I've been in situations in 
my life. I had no answers. I remember right here in this church one time, somebody was in trouble, and I mean, was was raining outside. There were no lights on, and I got on the floor and prayed, laid down prostrate before the Lord, and I prayed before the Lord, and the Lord said, Lord, if there's anything that can be done to help this person, Lord, can you help this person in the name of Jesus? And after about 20 minutes, I got up, and just as I got up from the floor, I got all is that answer the question. You've got to give it to the Lord and stop trying. A lot of people want to do it themselves. Trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not to thy own understanding and all my ways acknowledge him and he shall and he will direct your path. Stop getting in the middle of it and give it to God. Hallelujah today. Hallelujah today. He is the performer of signs and wonders for those who are brought Everybody came together and prayed and loved. 
for the cause of Christ. Verse 14, and believers were increased, increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women. Even with the things that were going on at that time, the church was being multiplied. Today, we got to pray that the church be multiplied. I'm telling you, even with this pandemic going around, Sunday morning before I came here, well, after we, we served Lord's Supper, I got in the car the other Sunday morning, and I just drove around at all the churches that were closed. And I held my hand and I prayed, Lord, when they come back, fill them up. Lord, when drove by this church, Lord, fill them up. Lord, fill them up. Fill them up. Lord, not necessarily with other church folks, but people that are that need to be saved. Lord, there's a lot of people in this country today that need to be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy. We need to, we need to get out there and pray for those people. Pray that these churches be filled. You have a lot of selfish people out there. Well, his church wasn't filled, but mine was. He, he, he. Go out there and say, I'm a follower 
Oh, oh, oh.